so we can start the session sir uh, people will join in between uh, yeah so I'll, I'll give a very brief introduction about uh, dr rakesh gupta sir uh, i welcome uh, dr rakesh gupta the president and uh, director of public health strategic institute for public health education and research for today's talk in fdp faculty development program on telemedicine Dr. Rakesh Gupta completed MBBS in 1982 and MD Ophthalmology in 1989 from Government Medical College, Patiala, Punjab, India. He is alumni of Johns Hopkins School of Public Health, Baltimore 2012 and uh, University of California, San, San Francisco 2012 as a short term scholar. He was formerly DHS and Director of Chemical Examiner Lab, Punjab. He has professional experience of more than 35 years and eight months in Punjab government as a PCMS officer, service as president and director of public health SIPHER since March 2020. More than 10 years of expertise in managing and actively contributing to national non-communicable diseases programs, especially blindness control or tobacco control programs. He was also former director of health sciences and chief chemical examiner Department of Home Affairs and Justice, Punjab. Uh, Dr. Rakesh has several publications in the areas of corneal blindness and public health management in India. He has consulted. Okay, sir, I think you can uh, skip the details. I think. Sure. Is enough, huh? Okay, sir. Okay. So, good morning, all. And uh, so, basically, I am an ophthalmologist. So, I am Dr. Raj Kumar and uh, Shridhar. So, they are from Optometry. So they they might be knowing about me also a little bit because I I was looking after that national program for control of blindness for quite a long time, but now I am more into this uh, public health. So next next slide please. So telemedicine in India it is an enabler of healthcare access and affordability. So you you know uh, the situation in COVID. When people they were they were not able to come out of uh, homes and uh, they are not able to reach uh, uh, the doctors. So telemedicine has been given a boost uh, because of this uh, pandemic situation. Though it was being used earlier also, but uh, now it is being used much more than earlier. Next. So these uh, telemedicine practice guidelines enabling registered uh, medical practitioners to provide healthcare using telemedicine. These were issued in uh, March 2020 by Ministry of Health and Family Welfare. So anybody who wants to see, actually it will be uh, more uh, useful to the medical practitioners, the doctors. But I have given the uh, link for the PDF. And also there's a presentation on YouTube available. So anybody can uh, just click on the link. I'll be sharing this. Uh, I've already shared with the uh, with the faculty, uh, with Dr. Rajkumar also. So anybody can have access to the PowerPoint and they can just click on the link to see the details. Next. So telemedicine is uh, basically delivery of healthcare services where distance is a critical factor and uh, we use information and communi uh, communication technologies for telemedicine and this is very good for diagnosis treatment uh, for prevention of disease and injuries and it can also be used for continuous uh, medical education for doctors or paramedical uh, workers and uh, it can also be used for research and evaluation next so telehealth is basically delivery and facilitation of health and health related services, including medical care provider and medical education, health information services and self care via telecommunications. So this is the way the telemedicine is delivered. So the registered medical practitioners is basically a person who is enrolled in the state medical register or in the Indian medical register under the IMC. It is not like other R R uh, RMPs you might be coming across in rural areas. So uh, they are basically MBBS doctors minimum and they, they have to be registered under IMC. Next. 
So the objectives of the telemedicine, as I told you, it is a specialized healthcare consultation to patients who are in remote locations. Uh, as 60% of the healthcare institutes, they are in the urban areas, and but uh, which cater to only 32% population. So you see, it is very important that uh, the healthcare facilities, they should go to the uh, rural areas also. I mean, the rural population should have an access to the specialized healthcare, so which is possible with the uh, telemedicine. And uh, to facilitate, we need to have video conferencing among healthcare experts for better treatment. And, um, and it also provides opportunity for continuous medical education, CME, for healthcare personnel. Next. So how it is relevant? So as we all know that uh, in rural areas, in the community health centers or uh, the district hospitals, the infrastructure is inadequate. There's an in inadequate manpower situation also. There's large number of indoor as well as outdoor patients who require uh, a referral for specialist care because not many specialists, they are available in rural areas. There's uh, an uh, acute shortage of uh, medical specialists, especially. And so there's low availability of healthcare experts and there's inadequate opportunities for training as well. So people, the doctors uh, staying in uh, rural areas, they don't have uh, an access to the continuous medical education facilities which are available in the urban areas. Next. So the benefits uh, of telemedicine, they are immense for uh, patients. So they can access the uh, specialized healthcare services easily. Uh, sitting in the comfort of their homes or when they go to the health wellness center, they can uh, tell the their problem to the, uh, the health, uh, those paramedical staff, which is available in the health wellness center. And they can be they can convey uh, their issues to the doctors and they can get even a prescription for that. So there's an easy access to expert, uh, expertise of medical specialists without any physical referral. That is important because uh, traveling is also difficult, especially in the pandemic uh, situation. The physical referral is uh, really difficult. And uh, there are reduced visits to the specialty hospitals for long-term follow-up. As you know, some patients of hypertension, diabetes, they have to be repeatedly prescribed the same medicine. So they don't have to visit the specialty hospital or the specialist doctor for such routine follow-ups. And uh, uh, like uh, the, the people who are terminally ill, like cancer cases, so they can't go to uh, physically to doctors. So it is of immense uh, help to them. Next. So the benefits for the physicians are the diagnosis. Uh, uh, the diagnosis can be improved and the management of the treatment is better for uh, doctors. And they have an access to computerized comprehensive data. It may be text data, it may be voice data, it may be images and of the patients offline as well as real time. So uh, it is very helpful for the doctors also. And uh, there's quick and timely follow up of the patients because no time is taken for the patients to travel and because the physical examination is not required. So it is very easy. The, the follow up is very easy. And as I told you, the continuous education or training facilities available for the medical as well as the paramedical staff through video conferencing periodically with the specialist doctors. Next. And for the hospital and the insurance benefits, there is significant uh, reduction in unnecessary visits to hospitalization for specialist care um, to tertiary hospital. As you know, when a patient has, uh, has to visit a tertiary hospital, so a lot of time is required because the patient, they get lost. I mean, they, are, they have to go for the OPD, they have to go for the lab uh, investigations, they have to go for other, uh, I mean, uh, requirements to different places so it is a very big hassle for uh, uh, patients especially from the rural background to visit tertiary hospitals so with telemedicine i mean uh, the unnecessary visits are at least uh, not required and earlier discharge of the patients uh, is there so there's a shorter length of stay in hospitals because if telemedicine facility is available so they don't have to uh, stay for long in hospitals and there's increase in the scope of services without creating physical infrastructure in remote hospitals. As you know, uh, our government is always short of funds. So not much funds are available for the 
upgradation of the hospitals, the infrastructure, the manpower is also short. So there's a lesser requirement for these services if the telemedicine facilities are made available. Next. So this is the model. So there's a nodal hospital, there's a referral hospital, and there's connectivity through any mode of for internet connectivity. So the uh, in the nodal hospital, the patient under treatment is there. The physician treating the patient is there, maybe not a specialist. A remote med telemedicine console having audiovisual and data conferencing facilities, uh, facilities is uh, made available at the nodal hospital. In Punjab, it is available in almost all the district hospitals. So for the referral hospital, you need an expert, a specialized doctor, a central telemedicine server having audiovisual and data conferencing facility. So these are the, and these are not very expensive inputs. I mean, the things required, the software and the hardware is not very expensive. And uh, this has made life easier for the patients as well as doctors. Next. So the referral centers, it has mentioned the digital camera is required, webcam is required, scanner, printer, and the specialized doctor, of course, they are required in the referral center for the nodal center. So doctor patients are required, electronic microscope is required, webcam, scanner, digital camera, ECG machine, printer, and even electronic stethoscopes are available so that uh, uh, doctors can auscultate uh, patient electronically without actually physically examining the patient. Next. So this is the sequence of tele uh, consultation. So there are some patients who visit the OPD local doctor checks in and uh, uh, gives treatment to the patient and they are out. So they don't uh, need telemedicine facility. But in case of specialized treatment, uh, especially if uh, in rural areas, the community health centers or the district hospital, if a specialist is not available, they have to be referred for the telemedicine system. So, and if uh, especially special uh, investigations, they may be suggested. So patient, they visit telemedicine data entry console. The operator, they enter the patient record, the data and the images of the any investigations if has uh, undertaken. And then appointment uh, is fixed online uh, with the specialist doctor. Next. So the patients are in a queue uh, as normally in OPD. So in teleconsultation also, they are in queue. So there's online video conference and teleconsultation for the patients between the local doctors at the nodal hospital and the specialist doctor at the referral hospital. So the patients, they get benefit of uh, uh, having specialized consultation without actually visiting a, a tertiary hospital. Next. So what services are provided through telemedicine? So referral and teleconsultation and video conferencing for, uh, you, you see there are some non-communicable like diabetes, mellitus and hypertension. They're very much prevalent in this part of our country, in Northern India. So the patient visiting health well centers, well health wellness centers, so they have community health officers. They are not doctors. So whenever required, they can consult the doctors and even have prescription for them. And for follow-up or for routine uh, medical prescription or medicine, so they can, um, I mean, continue to take medicines uh, prescribed by the, uh, the concerned doctor. So I think Mr. Arvinder Kang, he has also joined from. So welcome, Dr. Arvinder, Mr. Arvinder. Thank you so much, sir. Thank you, Dee. Yeah. So we are ha having a, an overview of the telemedicine. Actually, it is not a specialist. Uh, I mean, we don't have doctors as our participants. So I'm just giving an overview of the telemedicine. So how telemedicine can help patients, doctors, paramedical staff, so we have health wellness centers in Punjab and they are managed by the community health officers who are not doctors. They're basically staff nurses or uh, a &Ms. So they are also benefiting and the patients are benefited because uh, they get consultation from the specialist doctor. So, and uh, moreover, we get consultation for giving first aid in acute emergency situations, trauma, et cetera, because in all the hospitals, even district hospital, uh, we may not be having a orthopedic doctor. So for trauma cases also, uh, for giving what first aid is required, we can consult a specialist doctor. And it is very helpful for treatment of acute heart attacks cases. And if we can transmit the ECG 
the ECG uh, to the specialist doctor, they can guide. So what to, uh, how to proceed. So what uh, immediate medicines are required and even thrombolysis, an injection is given to burst the thrombus. So that can also be undertaken at the um, at the district hospital level or even community health centers. This is already being done in Punjab. And uh, in cases of stroke, because we have very short time to treat these cases, the heart attack or the stroke cases. And if done, the thrombolysis is done in time, they can save lives. So this telemedicine is being uh, used in that case also. Next. So this is the live session using the Lee's line. Next. So these are the images which can be transmitted through video conferencing or uh, whatever type of data transfer facilities available. Next. So these uh, ultrasound images can be passed on to the specialist doctor. Next. So this is the X-ray images. So we can exactly know what is the condition and the orthopedic doctor can help. So you can see the uh, that hand of the child is in a bad shape. A surgeon can see and uh, prescribe some medicines. Next. So these are the MRI pictures or the cat's scan pictures, which can be analyzed by the specialist, uh, radiologist, etc. Next. So this is the ECG. So ECG can be sent to the specialist uh, doctor or the cardiologist, and uh, they can rule out if it is heart attack. And if uh, heart attack is there, thrombolysis can be suggested, or immediately, I mean, they can be given sorbit rate, uh, eco sprint immediately for uh, as a first aid. Next. Next. So what are the challenges in implementing this uh, telemedicine? So we need to identify a suitable site and prepare the site for the telemedicine facility in the uh, nodal hospital, like district hospital, CSC. And then the civil, electrical, the equipment related works, they need to be synchronized. And we need to identify a, a person as a nodal officer who can interact with the coordinate for the telemedicine uh, uh, at, the, at the tertiary level hospital. And uh, sensitization, repeated hands-on training of doctors, technicians, nurses is required. And we need to coordinate with the referral centers to fix uh, mutually convenient teleconsultation sessions. So this has to be done on a regular basis. And uh, we need to ensure trouble-free and smooth connectivity. Internet connectivity, if it is not that good, so it may be difficult to have full uh, I mean, utilization of the telemedicine facility. Next. So what is the way forward? So we need to do handholding, support the hospital administration at least for three to four years to stabilize the telemedicine services at the nodal hospitals. Then there needs to be an integration of the telemedicine facilities with, with the HIMS, that is a health management information system for regular reporting. So because record keeping is very important. So we need to integrate it. So including uh, telemedicine activities in the performance appraisal. So it can be included. Uh, what kind of telemedicine activities have been undertaken by a person? So it can be used for the annual appraisals. And uh, introducing uh, telemedicine as part of the medical education and continuing uh, medical education. Because doctors who passed out maybe 5-10 years ago when telemedicine was not being practiced. So it has to be part of the medical education. and. Um, as I said, that continuous medical education is required for the doctors and the paramedical staff. Next. So I'll give you an example what we did in uh, Chandigarh, in Punjab, actually. So as you know, the during the COVID, now the it is, uh, I mean, the number of patients are reducing, but the post-COVID patients, the, there are issues uh, with the after the COVID also. And there are issues, the patients, they are not... Uh, comfortable uh, with the, I mean, they don't have knowledge about the, what kind of vaccination, when to get vaccination. So such kind of uh, uh, queries are we are getting. So uh, the second wave of COVID-19 in India, uh, as you know, it, it was a tragedy. And there was a need for citizens and countries to help each other during the crisis. So 
it became a global village actually the whole world that become a global uh, village helping each other so if covid 19 has taught us anything it is that we need each other to get this pandemic so very you have seen that uh, well i mean very progressive uh, and uh, developed countries like us they also suffered like us so they had lot of casualties also though the health infrastructure is much better than india still they had to suffer and uh, you know as you know india helped other countries also the third world countries with the vaccination and with all other kinds of even with the medicines so as a world we need each other in term of the countries to step up to help make sure that the world has an adequate supply of vaccine to ensure people they have treatments well as you know that uh, people they are moving about so uh, i mean they travel by air they travel by rail and so the infection can be transmitted from one country to other one state to other so the vaccination they has they has um, um, we need to have vaccination throughout the world so that uh, this uh, i mean transmission is stopped so we need to provide vaccine the um, the people the countries who can't afford they should be provided uh by countries which can afford even uh, as you know india is also providing vaccines to other countries so once tested positive for covid 19 the asymptomatic or the mildly symptomatic patients uh, which they comprise 80 to 90% cases they will need uh, they will not need to hospital administration and can, and can be managed uh, uh, in isolation and because of the lack of manpower and health infrastructure the mild cases in home isolation they were not being monitored i am uh, talking in the past sense because now the situation is much better so what we did in punjab was next so my organization that strategic institute for public health education and research we collaborated with the uh, with the punjab red cross and uh, and uh, about now presently about 38 doctors they are on board 38 doctors or um, yoga experts and nutritionists they are on board to help people uh, who are home isolated so uh, we came together in order to give a helping hand for patients and to unburden the healthcare workers and the hospitals and so we started this telemedicine services and um, as you know that uh, uh, during uh, those that peak time of the covid the healthcare facilities were overburdened there was not no availability of the beds no availability of the oxygen no availability of the doctors the doctors they they were also suffering some of the doctors they suffered as you know about uh, in this second wave uh, we lost almost 800 doctors and many more uh, uh, healthcare workers so it was a big loss uh, for the healthcare facilities which are already i mean our health facilities are not that good and because of the death and disease and the the transmission was so uh, so quick that we lost so many doctors and the paramedical staff so presently we have initially we started with just three panelist and now they are the coordinators now we have four coordinators and there are 38 doctors who are on board there are some doctors from uk and canada as well we have a yoga expert we have a diet dietitian also and their contact details they are shared on uh, website of cipher as well as punjab red cross and uh, through social media also we are uh, disseminating uh, this uh, telemedicine facility the teleconsultation facility and uh, uh, luckily uh, we are getting now uh, earlier we were getting 20 to 30 calls in a day but now just two four calls and mostly now we are getting calls for uh, post covid uh, issues and for vaccination so what we did was we we encouraged people to send whatsapp message regarding symptoms regarding investigation treatment received and what query they have and uh, uh, and the doctors they provided them uh, resolution by reverting as whatsapp message and if it was required in one full uh, phone calls were made to the patients next so this is the list of the doctors and this is uh, published on website of cipher as well as punjab red cross and widely uh, being disseminated through whatsapp through telegram and uh, that that uh, instagram then through facebook 
so whatever uh, social media sites are available it is being uh, transmitted it is being shared next so the result was that a standard operating procedure that was um, formulated a standard prescription was made the guidance document uh, uh, to guide the doctors actually and uh, in a virtual meeting we had a virtual meeting of all the doctors and uh, following the mohf guidelines we prepared a sop for this uh, teleconsultation and till date i mean till 11th of july last sunday we have uh, counseled about 1500 patients more than 1500 patients and uh, now as i told you that we have post covid uh, issues from the patients and the vaccination queries and uh, they were also counseled to avoid tobacco alcohol you know that tobacco in any form whether it is smoking form whether it is in smokeless tobacco or even the e-cigarettes so they affect the lungs uh, too much the lungs are affected and you know that the covid also affects the lungs or uh, any kind of infections they can be transmitted through smoking and the uh, use of the electronic cigarette also and for uh, smokeless tobacco the chewing tobacco you need you you know that uh, spitting is there and the spitting can transmit infections so they are counseled to avoid using tobacco in any form especially in this pandemic but otherwise also tobacco you know it kills almost 13.5 lakh people per year in india so almost 3700 people they die because of tobacco daily similarly alcohol that uh, breaks families and a uh, lot of money is uh, wasted on buying tobacco or alcohol so we always counsel the patients who are addicted or physically dependent on tobacco or alcohol and we also tell them how to do breathing exercises and what uh, healthy diet to take and they need to keep uh, themselves well uh, hydrated and if, because it was not physical examination so we were prescribing only symptomatic treatment so we used to prescribe uh, medicine which are available over the counter and not uh, the uh, the medicine which are prohibited so patients suspected of progressing in mod to moderate disease they were asked to uh, get admitted to the covid facilities and some uh, we even referred a case of suspected mucormycosis to pgimer so you see that the patients sitting at home and uh, home isolated they could use our uh, the teleconsultation facility and uh, we, we got very good uh, feedback from them in the form of testimonials so the conclusion of this uh, activity was that teleconsultation in the form of maybe whatsapp message sms or telecalls followed by a standard prescription and guidance by the medical experts it is an appropriate methodology to help majority of the patients in home isolation and also reducing the workload of frontline medical experts so this was one activity we did in uh, telemedicine next and i may also share another thing with you that uh, the health wellness centers in punjab they are using telemedicine uh, services and uh, this uh, our organization cipher along with pgimer we have provided 400 uh, dongles wifi dongles to them to improve the internet connectivity because the internet connectivity was an issue at the health wellness centers in the rural areas so in the wake of covid-19 pandemic the punjab government they have started uh, this telemedicine services to provide comprehensive primary health center uh, health services on doorstep of the people especially in the rural areas and it is a hub and spoke model so hub is in the uh, in the district hospital mohalli so we have seven med medical officers there and there's one telemedicine executive also there and we are using cdex e sanjeevni telemedicine application to roll out this telemedicine program and it is running very successfully so we are getting maybe 100 calls in a month or even more than that so there are about uh, more than 2000 health wellness centers uh, they are in punjab and we have 1582 uh, these uh, committee health officers as i told you that they may be staff nurses or even anms who are managing the health wellness centers so the health wellness centers uh, they'll actually be a game changer to increase the health system responsiveness to people by bringing services closer to communities 
and by enabling itself to address the uh, needs of the most marginalized section of the society through primary health care system. So it is a wonderful initiative of Punjab government and uh, of the government of India who are funding. Actually, government of India is funding most of these activities. Next. So as I told you, this uh, this is a hub and spoke, uh, spoke model. So they have, at the one end, there are rural beneficiaries. Then we have health wellness centers, uh, which have uh, CHOs, the community health officers. And then there is the telemedicine hub with the medical officers and uh, uh, telemedicine executive also. Next. So this is the telemedicine available uh, hub in the district hospital, Mohali. So as you see, the, we have uh, uh, many doctors working with us, seven medical officers, and uh, there's one telemedicine executive also. And they are all uh, trained um, as per protocol of the government of India. Next. So this is the teleconsultation in the health wellness center. You see this uh, committee health officer is uh, examining the patient and trying to help her out by teleconsultation. Next. So thank you, participants. And um, if you have any query, uh, because it was an overview of the telemedicine facility, it is not in details. For details, as I told you, you have a link. You have YouTube link also. So if anybody is interested in details, they can just click on the link and they have complete knowledge about the guidelines which have been uh, given by the Ministry of Health and Family Welfare. So thank you. So uh, if you have any queries, you can just uh, raise your hand and just unmute yourself and you can ask. So so Shishida, uh, so. so if there are any queries, then we are open to it. Or even they can send queries at my mail. It is rakesh60.mahajan at gmail.com. You can just. Yes, uh, sir. I will, I will share it to the faculty group, uh, your mail ID, regarding the queries. So uh, thank you, sir, for the talk. So it was a very simple talk. I mean, it was only basic. So I don't think uh, so many faculty members will be having any query. But still, if they have, they can just uh, send me a mail and I'll reply it. Sure, sir. Sure, sir. I'll share your mail ID in the okay. details. Okay, sir. Thank you so much. Okay. Thank you. Thank you. Bye.